Yeah, yeah. What's up? What's up? Another episode of Bulls and Reviews. It's your man Mogu. <laughs> And your man's trouble with you, Roy. What's going on? Did you see that shit? I'm watching live. We here, like, hey, we here right now. Another episode. <laughs> and today's movie is. Nightmare on Elm Street, oh, the original, yeah. 1984, and it's your man's Trouble T. Roy's pick. It's on you. Right your mouth. All right, so we got uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, directed by Wes Craven. Uh, anybody knows Wes Craven knows that he did uh, uh, Last House on the Left, uh, The Hills Have Eyes, and he also uh, put together the Scream franchise. Rest in peace, Wes, Wes Craven. Craven. Hey. All right, Pete. Um, this movie stars, uh, we got uh, Heather Langenkamp, we have uh, John Saxon, he played uh, Roper, anybody knows him from the End of the Dragon movies. Um, you also have Johnny Depp in his first film role ever. Huh. Um, I think wow. he was like in a band before he uh, actually started, uh, got in the act. Go ahead. And uh, this started a career for uh, Robert England, who of course plays uh, Freddy Krueger. Um, Wes Craven created a whole franchise of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, and uh, the original premise came from an idea um, that he had. Uh, Elm Street was based on a uh, street that he taught uh, college courses at. I think it was in uh, Texas, if I'm not mistaken. But it also was the uh, street where uh, JFK was assassinated. Mm. Um, he came up with the idea of uh, Freddy Krueger based on a bully that uh, used to mess with him when he was a kid. And then, uh, like the, I guess like the physical description of Freddy was mm -hmm. like a, uh, based on the idea that he had of a, uh, when he was a kid, he had someone that was like looking in his window, like an old man. And I guess he was kind of tormenting Wes Craven when he was a kid. And that kind of stuck with him. So that kind of became the, like the embodiment of like what he right. wanted uh, Freddy Krueger to represent. And they were one of the best horror movies ever made. Exactly. Best movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Freddy Krueger, his his original premise, he was supposed to be a, uh, when they originally put him together, he was supposed to be a like a child molester. Um, but they had a lot of cases back then of uh, like a uh, child molestation and all these uh, different cases. So they kind of sidestepped it. So when you watch the Freddy movies, you kind of get the idea of Freddy is like into like you know the sexual abuse thing, but they kind of downplayed it a little bit oh. because of what was going on in the 80s. Mm. So they made him just, you know, basically a child murderer. So you watch the further movies, you get an idea of what Freddie really uh, was based on. But anyway, the movie starts off uh, 1984, Springwood, Ohio. And uh, you have uh, the character Tina, who is uh, having these frequent nightmares of someone coming after her. Um, she awakens and uh, she tells her friends, which is uh, Nancy, uh, Nancy's boyfriend Glenn and Tina's boyfriend Rod. Uh, she lets them know she, she's telling them about these dreams that she keeps having of uh, someone coming after her. And um, out of support, they spend the night at her house uh, while her mother's out of town to kind of you know just you know make sure she's good. And uh, in the middle of the night, Tina has this dream again. Uh, she gets attacked in the alley. Uh, and this is your you know the first uh, footage, real footage that you get of Freddy Krueger. Uh, you see him in the yeah. law, in the alley, and you get the the long arms. That's like a you know like a real uh, memorable scene. The long arms and the, the claws scratching against the garage. And, <laughs> yeah, the sound. Yep, this, this is the screeching sound that we all know of. And uh, you know you see critique and move laughing because we you know off camera we laughed about uh, Robert England. They got to be his stunt double of uh, him. <laughs> Chasing kid. Tina up the alley with the with the arm wagging and you look like it's a little man. In two seconds he shrunk like three feet. Yeah, yeah, he's four foot three chasing Tina up the alley. But you the know? shot was good. Yeah. It was scary. In it 84 was. it was scary. And the yeah, music, the music, the ambulance yeah. attitude and everything. Yeah. And then you yeah, and then it was just the 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 point that it was Freddy. Yeah. So yeah, he, yeah. yeah. And that was a hell of an introduction. Yeah. So yeah, uh he's chasing her. Um, now she's asleep while this is happening. This is happening in her dream, but in the real world, she's being attacked. Uh, she's being slashed. She's being dragged up the wall in the ceiling. And Rod, her boyfriend, awakens to see this This is happening, but nobody's in the room with her, with, with them. And uh, he breaks out the room. Freddie kills her, of course. And um, now Rod is a, uh, a suspect in her murder. 
So, uh, you know, Nancy's uh, father, he's the, the, the town sheriff or the lieutenant, Donald Thompson, uh, played by John Saxon. And um, she's telling him what happened. You know, he's the only thing he's concerned about is why everybody was spending the night over there. He just had something to Yeah. Play right. Yeah, play by and what John the hell were y'all doing okay, over there? Okay, smart guy. Right. <laughs> play by John Saxon. You know, he just threw it. That would have been in parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, he just yeah. But yeah, of course, um, what they go through is uh, Rod is in jail. He's been caught. He's looked at as the murderer who uh, killed Tina. Uh, now Nancy is starting to suffer from the same nightmares. So the fears, you, you know, the fears there of uh, that she has, uh, you know, what Tina went through. Mm -hmm. um, her mother and her father are playing coy about what's really going on. Um, meanwhile, Rod is murdered in prison. Uh, he's um, made it to look like he hung himself in his cell. But really, of course, it was Freddie that came after him. Um, so in this point in time, Nancy's mother, she lets her know that um, Freddie was a child murderer that killed a lot of kids in the, in the town they lived in. Um, he was arrested, but someone uh, messed up and didn't sign a search warrant. And uh, he was able to uh, be free just like that. So the, uh, the, the parents of some of the victims and just the you know, parents that was just angry over the outcome, they hunted him down. I think it was at his boiler room that he used to work mm -hmm. in. And they burned it down while he was in there. So, you know, now Nancy knows who's coming after her. He's, you know, beyond the grave, he's coming after them and uh, killing the, the kids of the parents that uh, burned them alive. Uh, get another memorable scene. Uh, like I said, Johnny Depp was in the movie. He's Nancy's boyfriend. She warns him not to go to sleep. Uh, she's, she's trying to hunt Freddie down. She learns uh, why she was at a... Uh, at a facility that she's able to bring uh, whatever she touches out of her dream. That didn't have, that wouldn't have happened if Johnny Depp didn't go to sleep. Exactly. So if he, so even when he fuck up, he a good actor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> fucked up he did because yeah. he went to sleep right after Nancy told him not to. You get another memorable scene of uh, him being sucked into the bed and blood is just you know thrown everywhere through the mm -hmm. ceiling. Um, I would love to go into detail on how they put this scene together, the behind the scenes of it. Mm -hmm. But I can tell y'all that another little thing that I found out was that this actual room that they used to uh, uh, for that scene where Johnny Depp is sucked into the bed and blood is thrown out, yeah. they used this in Breaking Two, Breaking the Electric Boogie. Oh, so they, oh, so they turned the camera upside down. Yeah, yeah. So they glue everything. Yeah, uh, to, to the, the ceiling. Yeah, and they able to make a rotating room. So, um, move it, fellas. Yeah, so, they actually pouring it down instead, but yeah, it like uh -huh. the blood shooting up. Yeah, in 1984. Yeah, yeah. So that that scene in uh, Electric Boogaloo when Turbo dancing on the ceiling. Yeah, the originators. That's uh, See? that's him dancing on the ceiling. Yeah, and rotated. Uh, and everything is glued. To yeah, the everything yeah. glued. Yeah. To yeah. The mm. It's upside there. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this is man, this is my favorite horror movie of all time. There's certain uh, scenes that still kind of creep me out. We laugh about a lot of this shit today. Uh, the ending where Nancy's uh, after she kills Freddie and everybody assumes that he's dead, he sucks the mother through the through the, the, the door hole on <laughs> the door. That's the first. Uh, we laugh the about the little man, man chasing the Tina through the hallway. <laughs> but you know some of the creepy shit that still throws me off. Mm -hmm. Like um, after Tina's killed, uh, Nancy's first her first dream after Tina's murdered was Tina zipped up in a body bag and somebody it's pulling yeah. her down the hall in the blood stain. Like and Nancy kind of follows her. Yeah. Like, a like, yeah. like, even, yeah. you know what? Not racist by any means. <laughs> Not racist by any means. In real life, being woke, we already know white folks is, they do uh, 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 stuff that n normal people wouldn't do when they woke. But how in your dreams? And Nancy is the one that said this is only a dream. Right. And she fell. But you know you only get killed in your dream. Bitch, wake up first. <laughs> fuck, fuck Tina. <laughs> that bitch was dead. She's gone. Right, right. Let it go. Right. Let bad. it go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I get to that. So yeah, you, we ain't getting no rape. So what did you? So what did you rate this movie? Oh, man, this this like I say, 
favorite movie of all, favorite scary movie of all time, mm -hmm. one of my, in my top five or ten all time mm -hmm. movies. Um, this is the fifth for me of like yep. whatever your favorite drink may be. This is no, you this kick started the uh, oh, uh, oh, uh whatever. Oh shit, what's the, what's the top batch of? Everything up here is top batch. It, it all depends on what your flavor is. Well, let's do you know, let's do some. Angels Envy. Is that the finish ride? It better be because. <laughs> no, nah, we just. Nah, the import wine. No, that's finish. not the finish ride. I think we drunk. It's probably down there. We might have drunk that a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, okay. yeah, finish ride. That's still good though. But yeah, this yeah. is um this movie kickstarted uh, New Line Cinema. Um, they was a company that was you know struggling a little bit, but this movie saved them. This they say that this is the movie that uh that built New Line Cinema. So yeah. you know. Wow. Y'all the fans of New Line Cinema, y'all gotta give a lot of credit to this movie. Fans of Robert England, fans of Nancy, uh, I mean, uh, Heather Langenkamp. Um, all these people, and they kicked off the hell of a franchise. The whole, yeah, the whole franchise. Yes, so, yeah. Fans. So, yeah, now what's up, my man Critique? Yeah, oh, my wife won't mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, uh, where do I start? Nightmare on Elm Street. It, this movie is a classic in many, many ways. I will only uh, express to you a few. One is 1984. Oh, first off, if you are any, if you are a student of any type of movie genre, anything that got to do with movies, Go back and see what came out in 1984. Just go back and see what movies came out in 1984, along with Nightmare on Elm Street, mm -hmm. which, which I don't, I haven't got Mugu's review, but in me and T. Roy's definite opinion, he said one of, he said if not the best horror movie of all, time, Nightmare on Elm Street made it up to six, five, five. Uh, at Dream World. Well, if unless you count the remake. In 2000. Yeah, we don't want to do it. Give it about seven before they did. Uh, oh, because they did that one day. You got Freddy's Dead. Like, and, uh, yeah. You got, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Mm -hmm. so okay. Yeah, give it about I seven. forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. Now, we already know. We already know. Well, people like us already know. It is very hard to top. the. If you're making a sequel, it's very hard to top the first one. You're probably not going to top the first one. It can be good. Yeah, but it has to be complimentary. Yeah, but how many? And I'm just gonna say this: even though in these Michael in these Halloweens, Jason, uh, Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, these are horror flicks. Yeah, that then went six or better. Yeah, like you just heard T. Roy said, Nightmare on Elm Street got to the point to where it was Wes Craven's Nightmare and Freddy's Dead. We watched them. Man, it's a whole different story behind that. Yeah. yeah. Down, you know. But, like I said, the money that each movie brings in dictates if you're going to get a sequel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, so, what Jason went, Friday the 13th went back around six to me. Mike Myers, I can't even tell you because they numbers is all over. But Nightmare on Elm Street, to me, went dead at four, after four. Okay. Um, uh, uh, two was the weakest. I, I didn't say it wasn't good, but it just like like I can watch two all day. But it went on for three more after that. Mm -hmm. That means people was expecting something. Yeah. Even after the first bad one, they were like, "We gonna give you that." Yeah. The second bad one, we gonna give you that. The third bad, one, we gonna give you that. Is you gonna make another one? We're probably gonna see it, but you did. There's no close comparison. But what makes Nightmare on Elm Street? Nightmare on Elm Street separates from the Friday the 13th and Halloween. This was a different, not just a different killer. Um, the only thing he might have had in common, might, is that <laughs> instead of one blade, Freddy had five. <laughs> he had five. He came to you in your sleep. He wasn't big. He wasn't, he was he wasn't going he got you on his territory, meaning somehow, some way, he figured out after he died, 
Yo, uh, say, how do I come get these niggas back in their dreams? <laughs> Somehow he was granted the power. I stop them. But Freddie was coming through ceilings. Freddie was making black holes in beds. <laughs> he, he was, he was the type of, um, of a killer that didn't mind making, like, if you had a sense of humor when Freddie was trying to kill you, he probably wouldn't have killed you because that nigga had a sense of humor. He's chasing Tina exactly. down the motherfucking alley. He done already gobbled out on the nigga. <laughs> I call him Octo Goblin because he had arms like octopus scraping on uh, scraping on metal that was at least ten feet away from him. And then he went short, like he was like Michael Jordan in one shot, and the very next shot he was Muggsy Bones. Spoiled well, <laughs> well. But but you know, in 1984 we didn't laugh. We was like, oh girl, run. Right. Run, please, or yeah, wake up the fuck up. Yeah. That's part of this nigga's uh, M.O. Like, you know, he, he can do anything. He's in your dreams. Yeah. I watched it the other day. The shit was funny. Like, I still was scared. Like, I'll, I'll just lay down and be like, nigga, how did you just swing like that? How did your arms get that long? Fucking kill me. I ain't got to waste my time with your ass. I just seen everything but God anyway. Hey. So, so then, when he chasing her... Freddie had a sense of humor and a knife and a mask. Freddie ain't had no, his mask was just burnt. Nick, Freddie came at you with a hat. Nick, he nigga had a brim. And he, he put some knives on his hand and he come to you in your dream. That shit, the idea of it scared us then. Once he, he's coming through the ceiling uh, when he's chasing Tina, that part is iconic to me. Mm -hmm. um, um, when he's chasing Tina through the uh, through the alley. He says, Tina. He turned, she turns around and be like, what? He said, he looked, he said, watch this. And he cut off his finger. And he <laughs> laughed at him like, if I could do this to myself, just imagine what I'm about to do to you. I would have laid right. down. Yeah. I would have laid down at that point like, yeah, dog, you're right. All I got is two feet. Right. When, Na when he caught up, when Nancy, when he came to Nancy's dream, Nancy said, <laughs> some shit. Instead of trying to wake up, she said, who are you? Nigga said, bitch, you don't know. Pulled up his shirt and cut himself in the ribs and laughed again. Yeah. In 84, yeah. that shit scared the hell out of me. Like, yeah. dog, I stay in Detroit. Man, I know the worst killers it is. Some of them in my family. One of them might be my mama, dog. They don't do shit like that. That was scary at the point. Yeah. In 84, that was scary. We ain't never seen nothing like it. You coming in my dreams. Now, odds are better if you just run or try to, or try to wake up. This is what yeah. we do. Yeah. Um, another thing, the only the, the only black person that was in this movie was Nancy's mama, cause she hid the vodka in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> she hid the vodka in the closet. <laughs> Nancy, yeah, she stood no. in front of it a couple times. Yeah, no, she couldn't see. Her mom was getting bit. Dude, boy, and, dude. dude, and she was getting bit before Freddie like really hit her like yeah, he was doing yeah. like this. Like, that was, that was nigga, good. I do this. She had that guilt. I do it, and so I'm going to give this movie. I'm going to step out. We're moving and T. Mm. Right now, I got a, I got a whole nother lot to say, but you know what? We're handling the comments. I'm gonna give it a. A bottle of more. Whoa. Mm. I'm going to give it a bottle okay. of more. We do fifth. Niggas ain't never gave champion. No, I ain't even going to give it the bottle of more. I'm going to give it the bottle of rosé. Wow. I'm going to give it okay. that up. Bro. Yeah, know, and he got rosé in it. It ain't over. Yeah. You know, and, and then I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> Wood for reserve. Double bait. Man. Yeah. Got the bottle of rosé yeah. and a shot. There wow. is. Okay. You are missing major shit in your life if you haven't seen this movie. It's been out in 1984. You're missing major shit in your life if you ain't seen it yeah. at least 20 times. Oh. Hey, yeah. hey, 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 hey. If you ain't seen it at least 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Bottle of rosé in the shop. I gave him a number. <laughs> but, uh, hey, a bottle of mo and a, hey, look. And a shot of what was there. Only because... You have, like, like we take this shit serious. Yeah, we call booze and reviews. Yeah. We take it serious. It, it don't get no serious when I'm putting it in my top 25, but my first genre is gangster films. Mm -hmm. But 
I bet you, if anybody's going to put a horror flick in their top 10, top 20, top 30, the first horror flick in anybody's top thing is going to be either Nightmare on Elm Street mm -hmm. or the first Halloween. Okay, I'll give you that. That is it. That, that, yeah. And that says a lot because horror films really don't make the cut financially, really, the income. This one, if, if Blockbuster was only selling Nightmare on Elm Streets and Friday the 13th and Halloween's, that's still being business. Mm. <laughs> that's still being business because because it's more people out there like us. They, you know, they just, they, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. They just ain't on, uh, on, 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 on the computer. I think in the past years, Halloween has taken on a big thing. So if you got it in the name of your movie mm -hmm. or... That's the type of run mm -hmm. you're doing, and mm -hmm. you know you're gonna you gonna make a you know you gonna make a hit. Yeah. But I, you know I hit man, so I'm not a big horror movie uh, buff. But however, it is definitely Freddy is an iconic figure in movies. Period. Uh, and I think you get a lot from some of the movies prior, but then you have to appreciate what it has done up to this point. Mm -hmm. So in this movie. Freddie does not speak a lot. Mm -hmm. But in the next movies, he gets definitely more and more boasts. Mm -hmm. And he speaks more. He yeah. says more. Yeah. He got more punch lines that mm -hmm. people can remember. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, well, well, this is prime time, well, bitch. Prime time, you know, you, you, you get all those dope things. Mm -hmm. But I will say, uh, this original, first time watching it, uh, definitely was definitely something that I had to uh, as a kid, well, it was, I was in the seven, eight range mm -hmm. when I watched it, maybe 10 when I watched it. Definitely scary because, I mean, these are things you don't know what's coming around the corner. Mm -hmm. So, and then they got the music to play. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then there was no. Then they set the scenes. The whole, like, the whole killing motherfuckers shit is not new. But him only getting you in your dreams. Well, see, Disney. again, because you got to sleep. You can't, yeah. there's Everybody no way. Sleep. Everybody has to sleep. How many people, let cut you off, no, how no. many people, after y'all seen that movie, you didn't even have to say nothing? They even came to you and was like, oh, y'all seen Nightmare on Elm Street? How yeah. many times did the conversation go through, did y'all go to sleep that night? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. We knew it was a movie. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. I don't, but you know, black people skeptical. Last time we trusted <laughs> white folks, we came over here and changed. <laughs> White folks made this movie. We wasn't trusting like these niggas on the side. And then I even oh. add, and I even add this point on to mm -hmm. it though. I feel like because I was talking to T. Roy about this as well, so I'm bringing this up. Mm. He was like one of the first ones. Okay, like where it's a real superpower. Mm -hmm. So like a super villain. Where, mm -hmm. Okay, first one. first part of Nancy turn the wall to plastic, mm -hmm. and I'm almost to touching you. I but you sleep. Up. Yeah, he can I mean, do anything. But while are you, you sleep. really? But are you in real? And are you really in reality? Look, she's in the tub, and his glove comes out the fucking water. She was asleep though. Yeah, but are you really? In, but see, there's parts even to the end, right? Okay. Are you really in? Re, are you really in reality at the end? Wait a minute. Because you. That's the, the only car. time everybody was woke. Right. Wait a minute. Were, were they woke? When you talking about what was it? Or was it? When she, when she was in the tub, she, she was. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, at the end, it off. when the mama came, I thought you were talking about at the end when the mama got drugged through the. Uh, yeah, the door. The hole. door. Yeah. The car door is locked. Yeah, yeah, she's really sleeping. So that was a. They said that was a dream. They said that yeah, was a dream. Yeah, it had to be. Yeah, it was but, but she, but she but, was it. See, but see, I don't see. know because she took back all her power. See, and when Freddie came for her. He so, dissipated in her. So she learned. So that all led me to believe. So that, that ending part is kind of up for discussion. Yeah. Because she learned she all the ways to, to take sleep. the power from it. I'm going to tell y'all what Robert England said. Robert England said that he. Wait a minute. Time out. I just want to ask. I got one question. <laughs> I know the answer to it, but I'm going to ask it. I'm going to answer it anyway. Is there a. Is, do there be times to where. You like sit down after hard days work, eight hours, and I'm working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't come home. Hey, kids, what's going on? Hey, babe, what's up? You want it now or do you want it later? Uh, 
I got shit to clean up. And then you sit down, find out some time to yourself. Trey, I'm betting you be like, if on this movie, now I already know, I've been knowing Troy for over 20 years. I already know Nightmare on Elm Street is thing, but now this is, I think I know the answer one more answer. Yeah. I think when Troy finally got time to himself, he sits down and be like, I wonder what New Last Cinema is doing. <laughs> and he's on his head. <laughs> it's Robert England Mary. Like, you know, me, I'm kicking my feet up, maybe rub one out right quick, you know, so that I get rid I get ready for the wife later and shit. I can go like two, like like maybe twelve minutes. <laughs> rub one out for you know, I'm thinking about life. My question is, that, like, really, when you got free time, it's like one of the first five thoughts of, like, you know, like, is they coming out with a new Nightmare on Are you on the phone, like, figuring out some Nightmare on shit? No, he got a telephone number, too, though. <laughs> so he can talk to them. Hey, man, y'all can't be giving up all my stuff. <laughs> like, like, I know this is his shit. I know this is his shit. He already said, before we even started, before we even started this, you know, I don't know Nightmare on Elm Street gonna be one of my things. This is when you like steal <laughs> off of a uh, juice. Like, y'all know this T Roy, like, nigga all Denzel out and shit, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucking, you know, dreads and shit. Nah, I've been knowing this nigga since the days of juice, dog. This nigga <laughs> took, dog I wonder could, could Freddy Krueger, like, actually go to school with, you know, juice and bishop and them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, would he be dreaming? <laughs> okay, that never happened, but I wouldn't trip on it if he said it. <laughs> so I asked him a question, Doc, do you just randomly like, huh, I wonder if I knew that cinema clock coming out. Hey, hey man, it, <laughs> it just was a lot to untuck with this. It, it was a lot to unpack with this movie. Boom. It's a special place, special time, and uh, it was the 80s. And you ain't even unpack at all. I didn't. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we've been talking about it. Some, yeah, I ain't gonna hog y'all. You know, y'all got Yeah, you know what? My bad. Hey, we'll go, it was, no, no, I'm gonna I'm go with, I'm gonna give this a three-quarter cup. Okay. What? It reminded me, although that I'm not a real horror movie buff, Hey, I, I'm not a real horror movie buff, but I like the character of Freddy. I like how they, uh, over time, I like how they built him up. And I like, you know, like I said, I like how they built him up and um, Don't give knowing the story. The, funny, <laughs> the funniest part of this movie, as always, has always been the mama getting pulled through the door. <laughs> At the <laughs> end of the movie, it is no, always I funny to me. I don't know why. Even in 1985, before yeah. we started, we pull it right through the door. I yeah. had to get a little older, but but I feel like, but I felt like that's what was telling y'all, hey, mm -hmm. I'm gonna make more movies. Yeah. Because I took their mama, and I know she's not gonna get her back unless she come get me. Right. So I feel like that, mm -hmm. but and then I also you said that was funny. You laughed at that yeah, at that 11 years dog. old. No, and like now, that, that, yeah, that was funny. You, you yeah. laughed at that dog. That's get scary. That's exactly. Out of me. That's exactly why you know, he gave it three points. Okay. He ain't so, seen it enough. So the no, the scariest move, the scariest part of this she movie, was the, first the scariest part of this movie right. was when Tina was getting killed because homeboy sitting there like, I'm not doing this, but I'm watching her getting slashed to bits. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure y'all seen that was, it. That was scary. He was the bad boy. It's always the bad yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm call gonna him get with no, call him with no shoes. Try yeah. to run. Yeah. Go ahead, Gio. Uh, but yeah, I'll give this movie. Gio rating. I, I, give, I, I, got a I, I already said I'll give it three uh -huh. quarters of a cup. Okay. The great, solid movie. I like how they had an iconic character okay. uh, that went on through years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was just my thing. But again, that was. Horror is not my big thing, but yeah. as far as Freddy, That's he was a good, one. iconic character that they brought across. Okay. All yeah. boys should have said, you know, I already knew. The, Horror is not his thing, and that's actually fine. I'm just fucking with mood. I'm personal with the shit. So, <laughs> when the cameras goes off, like, it, it might be a tussle. That's a lie, because this nigga used to bounce. And my <laughs> neck just got healed. Mugu, Mugu looked like that, but, you know, nigga do some shit like this and shit. You know, why you think he in the middle? <laughs> oh, nigga, go in! He like, yeah. Hey, man, I want the middle. He puts his chest out. I got a big-ass neck brace on. Nigga, <laughs> what? Fuck the middle. I'm on. Nigga, I fuck you, nigga, when you gone. I'll be talking again. <laughs> no good. Or a flick. I don't know. I can name him, but I know it will be a while with it. And okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Now, the only one. I got, I got y'all. 
I was gotcha. rooting for Kincaid. I just knew Orla- uh, or or who was Orla- uh, Orlando? Dude that played in Juana Man that was in Friday the 13th. Who yeah. was in the shit? I was talking about. Ooh, baby, I had the fat chick. He was putting yeah. her in the van. Yeah, and then, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That dude was on good time. <laughs> you don't kill him. <laughs> and I'm saying this to everybody. Hey, I even come on now. That's Friday the 13th. He was gonna get got. And he made it through down there half the movie. He had a leather jacket, jack pants, and chains around. Y'all, you don't kill. And on the shitter. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to say this to at least more than the people that was in the room at the time. I thought about it. Send it to y'all. You don't kill that guy, dog. He had a dairy curl. Are you serious? <laughs> and, but you, but you know, he was the he was the so called bad boy in that movie. I'm like, yeah. See, you had a dairy curl. You was the bad, bad boy in every one, yeah. And they got him. But Ken K, I was hurt when Ken K came back. Like I didn't say it at the time. I was, and this is how they get you. To where you go out the movie theater and brag to your friends like, dog, Ken K came back. Yeah. But they got his ass. Yeah. Nowadays, I would have been like, man, fuck y'all. I don't know. I kick five, that check. Yeah, he the first five, first five minutes. Yeah, yeah. but he yeah. made it through the first one. And dog, you the, usually the black people are the example. And dog, then, man, that's true. Oh, we gotta do something about it. They went in the first five minutes. Like y'all said. They said, know. y'all think we let this nigga live. No, nah, we already know y'all about to give us all this money. We gonna make another. We gonna hurt you. But I like what they did with Freddie as far as making him more of a dream deal mm-hmm. versus the physical. Yeah, because it's like okay, it was the first. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like his the dream, the dream aspect. Mm-hmm. And in 1984, and that's why this what makes Wes Craven a, another thing. We about to wrap it up. Wes Craven ain't put no black folks in his movie in Nightmare on Elm Street because no niggas don't go for that. <laughs> niggas wouldn't have went for that. Mad Nancy was popping no those drinking. And she had a pot of coffee, a big gallon pot of coffee in her room. Her she, had no those, she had no She had Aaron in there. Nigga, she was she was popping perks, <laughs> Zannies. Nigga, she was selling pussy all in the room just to stay woke. If you don't believe me, nigga, watch the behind the scenes credit. Nigga, Nancy was getting it. <laughs> Move, take us out. <laughs> That's why I want no black people in the That's what makes Wes Craven back. He ain't, he ain't like the niggas that deal for Friday the 13th for Halloween. They put a nigga in there just let y'all know y'all niggas still ain't shit. Now I'm mad. Give me something. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, it's another episode of Booze and Reviews. The movie we're reviewing today is Friday No. No! <laughs> See, oh, like I said earlier. Back. <laughs> You will give this movie half a cup if you ain't seen it more than 20 times since 1984. Or, movie, what's the movie again? you're watching it again. It's Nightmare on Elm Street. Part what? The original. What year was it, man? In 1984. It was Who was the main character? Freddy. What's his real name? Freddy. Robert England. What year come was he on. born? What year was he oh, born? Oh, come on now. That's the last one. What was his first kid? Come on, who Jim, knows that? Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Oh! <laughs> them niggas, that was all the makeup they knew, all the makeup they wore, they probably look like Freddy Krueger up under there. Go ahead, oh, take yeah, it off. baby. Just okay. <laughs> another episode of his reviews. We having a hell of a time here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, please cup. check that movie out, y'all. If y'all yeah, see it. like, share, subscribe, subscribe, and subscribe. And Again. it's your man, Trouble T. Roy. Thanks. And your man, Scratch T. Watch your mouth. And your man, Moogle. We taking you out. Thank you. Okay.